Karaba re karaba sa karaba handai re karaba su karaba re karaba si karaba re karaba su karaba handara basi karaba handai re karaba si karaba handara basi karaba re karaba su karaba handai re karaba si karaba handara basi karaba handara basi karaba handara basi karaba handai re karaba si karaba handara basi karaba handara basi karaba handara basi karaba handara basi karaba handai Hallelujah thank you Jesus Hallelujah kura basa kara ba re kara basa kara ba handa ra basa kara ba handa re ba ba basa ra kara ba handa ra basu kara ba handa kara basi kara ba handa ra basi kara shall we raise our hands together unto the Lord amen hallelujah hallelujah let us give thanks unto the Lord hallelujah hallelujah for what he has done for us this week or even for this month hallelujah let us give thanks unto the Lord hallelujah he kara basa kara ba handa ra basi kara ba handa ra basi kara ba handa O karabasa la karabre karabasa karabahanda rabasi karabarabashi karabahanda rabasi karabahanda. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, for what you have done to us in our lives, Lord God, in this month, Lord God. Even before that, Lord God, we just want to give glory, glory and honor unto your name, Lord God. Hallelujah thank you Lord Jesus we just want to give you praise we want to give you thanks unto the Lord oh God the Bible says oh God give thanks unto the Lord for this is good and pleasing unto the Lord hallelujah let us continue to give thanks unto the Lord hallelujah hallelujah thank you Lord Jesus hallelujah rabashikara bahanda rabashikara bahanda whatever the things that we face this man, Lord God, hallelujah. We just want to continue to give thanks. People of God, just continue to give thanks unto the Lord. Whether it's good or bad conditions, Lord God, that we face for this man, let us continue to give thanks unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us sing the song, give thanks unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. To the Holy One Give thanks Because He's given Jesus Christ His Son And now Let the weak say That I am strong Let the poor Said I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. And now, and now, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I. Reach because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. Let's continue to sing. Give thanks unto the Lord. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ, His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. Christ, His Son. 
Jesus, hallelujah. Father God, we just pray, Lord God, we lift up this service unto your hands in the name of Jesus, oh God. We pray, Lord God, that your presence is here among us, oh God. Lord, your word says, oh, where two or three are gathered together in your name, Lord God, there you are in the midst of us, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank God for so many of us come together this morning to praise and worship you unto your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We just want to give you praise. We want to give you honor. We give you all. The glory unto your name, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We just want to commit the preaching of your word, Lord God, to Master Gumi Singh, Lord God. Pray, Lord God, that you anoint him with the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, so that he can deliver your word with power and with authority, Lord God, so that every one of us can be blessed, Lord God, by your word, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Even as he's on the way here, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, to grant his safety journey, mercy, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God. Father God, we just pray, Lord God, this. This, this place of God belongs to you, Lord God, where every one of us, Lord God, will be submerged into your presence, Lord God. We just want to immerse into your presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for those who are still on the way, Lord God. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that your breath and safety journey must cease here, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for the rest of the week, Lord God, whether we are in a workplace or whether we're in a house, Lord God, whatever, do it for your own thing, Lord God. Throughout all the week, Lord God, we just pray, Lord God, that you continue to bless us and bless our family as well, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, throughout all this uh, progress, throughout all this week, Lord God, that you bless us, church service, as we bear, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We just want to give you honor. We just want to give you praise. And we just want to give you Honor unto your name, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give unto God a praise. Prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Shalom, shalom. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Those of you here and those of you watching at home, it's so good to be in the house of the Lord. It's so good to praise and worship Him together. There's going to be lots and lots of testimonies after this. Amen. Brothers and sisters, can we get ready for praise and worship? Can everyone please stand, open up your hearts, and we're going to start right now. Come on, let's praise the Lord. The Lord who praise His name from the heights of heaven He reigns, seated in the highest place, surrounded by living grace, praising for His mighty deeds, awesome in His majesty, praising now with airport sounds, lift your voice and dance around. Come on, everything that has been. Praise the Lord, everything that's in us, praise Him. Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. One more time. Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Everything that's in us, praise Him. Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, the instrument. What he's done for us, for our sins upon the cross. Praise the Lord, all you are, mind and soul, will and heart. From his hand comes everything. He is God, he is our King. Come on! Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Everything that 
amazing celebration for our risen Lord. Amazing, amazing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, oh. So, so beautiful, so wonderful. He is our beloved. Yeshua 
use your voice. I give you my soul. I live. Every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. Give in your heart again. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment. Brothers and sisters, shalom once again, shalom. You may be seated while our chairperson, Brother Barnabas, takes it away. Praise the Father, praise the Son, praise the Holy Spirit. Praise the Godhead, praise the three in one. Praise Yahweh, praise the great I am. Praise El Shaddai, praise the everlasting God, praise Abba Father. Praise the King of Kings, praise Lord Jehovah. Praise the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. You are worthy to receive the scroll and to open his seal. For you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing. Blessed be the name of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Taken from Psalm number uh, Psalm eight, it has got nine verses. I'll read all the nine verses. O Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth, who has set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers the moon and the stars, which you have ordained. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? I repeat that verse. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our God, how excellent is your name. Yes, Lord. O Lord, our God, how excellent 
is your name. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Sister, can you switch over? For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. I'm going to, take, I'm going to read from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 10. Switch off, switch off. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 to 10. Verse 6. But this I say to you, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart. Not grudgingly or of necessity, but for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. How now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase and increase the fruits of your righteousness. For all things come from you, and of your own we have given to you. Our Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, we thank you for providing for all our daily needs and fulfilling our desires. All that we have belongs to you. We want to give back a portion of what you have given us for the building of your kingdom. Please accept our offering. Continue to give us a heart of giving. When we give, we are blessed. Help us to be a blessing. Amen. Ashes. Let's go through the bulletin. Online Myanmar service uh, every Monday, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Please contact Brother Pastor Peter Paul Ang. Uh, Paul, Pastor Peter Ang. Chinese Bible study with Pastor Dr. Philip Kwan through Zoom, 8 p.m. Tuesdays. Wednesdays, combined prayer meeting physically, 8 p.m. Online revival meeting with Reverend Gurmit Singh via Zoom. That's Thursdays, huh? 8 p.m. Sunrise prayer encounter via Zoom, Saturday, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Marketplace fellowship ministry, Monday to Saturday at Kwan Specialist Medical Center, 9.30 to 10 a.m. Evangelism and social welfare ministry, please contact Brother Tony Chan or Brother... Johnny Lau. Adulam Care Center, please keep them in prayer. That is part of the church uh, ministry. The best way to connect it with the SLA body of Christ is by joining one of our life groups. We meet in different homes for a time of worship, Bible study, and prayer. 
do join a live group today. Contact Sister Liling. Uh, the number is there. Attention to all youths out there. Life Youth huh, is on every Saturday at 2.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. in church. Do contact Elizabeth Yu and the telephone number or Desmond Lo, Lau. The telephone number is there. We are celebrating Parents' Day on 29th May 2020 at Lucky Palace Restaurant at 10 a.m. Kindly reserve your seats or table with Sizzling Tan. The handphone number is there. $30 per pack. Lunch served. Cake cutting ceremony, song and dance performance. A cozy corner for families to have their photos taken. For brothers and sisters in Christ who have, would like to give their tithings and offerings to God but are not able to come to church physically, you may do so by online bank by online bank into the account of Sramban Library Assembly. The number is there. Kindly uh, uh, adhere to SOPs. Huh? Although they have lifted, we can go, but in gatherings like this and outside, when you go to restaurants, anywhere, hospitals, clinics, we still have to wear our masks. We have to take care of our own uh, cleanliness. We have to be careful. Okay. Now I think it's testimony time. Anyone with testimony? Testimony, testimony. No testimony, so I just want to say one or two things. You know, on 3rd May uh, 2022, we had this soaking in the presence of God in church. Soaking in the presence of God. About 25 to 30 people were there, and I was one of them. There was no messages there, there was no music, no songs, nothing. It was only soaking in the presence of the Lord as the Holy Spirit led. For about two and a half hours, uh, I don't know how two and a half hours passed by. I just closed my eyes and was just thinking of the Holy uh, Father. Two, hours, two and a half hours passed by. And after that, each and everyone was given a chance to tell, explain what, how they felt and all that. I enjoyed it. Beautiful. Because nothing else is in front of you. Only the presence of the Holy Spirit. And it was a beautiful experience. It is my desire that the church will have it once in six months. So that more and more brothers and sisters can participate. And they can understand what it is. What it means by soaking in the presence of the Lord. We don't need anybody to lead us. We can come here. The very fact that we are here in the name of the Lord, we can also do it. Thank you for the men, uh, uh, Sramban Life Elders for organizing it. I have been with this church uh, from October 2014. I am 74 years old. I have seen the peace in this church, the friendliness and all that. But unfortunately, last week something took place. I don't want to go into the depth of it. It should not have taken place. Because this is a place of God. We come here in uh, the attitude of brothers and sisters. We come here in the fear of the Lord. So please, we pray that everyone uh, has the right to come here and pray. Everyone has their own opinions. But let this let not affect the sanctity of this church. I hope I have not offended anybody. But that is the truth. If there are no more, uh, I want to give two short testimonies, very short ones. This one I must glorify God. Very simple one, but it's important. You see, on last Thursday, uh, I, I drove my granddaughter to school. As I was going, my car was giving me problem. I left her, I came back. When I was coming back, I saw another old car like mine already stalled there because of problem. And that caused a massive jam along the Putri Road. So I came back home. I had my bath, I went to town to see what is the problem. In fact, my exhaust pipe was, there was a hole making a lot of noise. So I took it to the person who does it. He raised it up, he said, Uncle, your, your what is that, driving shaft is gone, it's leaking, the uh, tube there has been worn out. And then he lowered it down. I didn't want to do the exhaust pipe at that time. So what I did, he told me you drive to the 
mechanic shop and get it done. When I started the car, the starter refused to, the car refused to start. It could have stopped anywhere else, no? If I stopped doing when I was sending my daughter to granddaughter to school, it would have been a real problem. It didn't start. But what happened that uh, he's not a mechanic, he only does exhaust pipe. And he managed to get his start. He said, go as soon as possible to your uh, mechanic. And that was in market area. I drove all the way to Templar Road where you have these workshops and all that. And the car, went, I found it very difficult to drive the car, but went and landed there. And after that, they did all that. It cost me about eight to nine hundred dollars. So I thank God that if the car had stopped in town, or while I was sending my daughter, granddaughter to school, I would have faced more problems. And it cost me more. Then the following day was uh, Friday. I had to send my daughter because she's now in the pregnancy stage. She has to go to the KPG hospital for a checkup. So I forgot about it. And Thursday night, suddenly she reminded me, you have to go. I went into my room, checked my cash flow. I had only $45. <laughs> to go and see the doctor, I need at least $200. So I called two of my friends. I couldn't get through to them. So next morning, I got, I said, where am I going to look for the money? Not that I didn't have money. I got a little bit of money. I put in a fixed deposit. That fixed deposit will last me until the, whatever money I had will last me until the 10th of June. If I had not spent the money on my car, that money would have been sufficient to see me through. But I didn't have. So I was thinking, Lord, what am I going to do? Where am I going to look for the money? I don't have any more in the ATM card and all that. I cannot remove it. At 8.30, yeah, somebody calls me. I talked to them. I left it when I had my bath. Then I said, Lord, are you, are you telling me to call this person? So after my bath, I went and called him. He answered. I just said, I need some cash. He asked me how much. I told him the amount. And he said, within half an hour, the money will be there. Two small incidences, but it meant a lot to me. So I praise the Lord. Praise our Lord and Savior. <laughs> if there are no more testimonies, then we come. Good morning, everyone, brother, sister. Good morning, Pastor Juan, Sister Li Leng, and Pastor Kumi Seng. Yeah, I come back here to this church after this COVID. A uh, few times with jo uh, Joanne, then these two times with my sister. Then, Mother Day, I was very happy. Then, even the day I came, my neck was straightened. I thank God. Is it that I come to this church? Jesus is here. People say fairies also can see fairy in this church. I think this church is very anointed with Jesus here and all the fairies. I believe that all. So I hope that if I keep on coming, my neck and I have faith in it, my neck will surely be healed by Jesus. So oh, anyway, Mother Day I was straight, but today is it better? I'm not sure. But I hope that it will be better. So thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen. See, when I say my testimony, what is important is I don't need to wait for 24 days. If I were to go, I went to the bank to withdraw it, but the bank said, we withdraw, your interest is gone. And that's not much, $1,000. But for a man who is not working and has got a limited amount of money, $1,000 is a big amount of money. So the Lord helped me to save me from that. Praise the Lord. Now, since there are no other testimonies, we will wait for the uh, most important event, presentation, and we will call upon uh, Reverend Dr. Gurmit Singh. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is a good God. How many of you say amen to him? 
Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So good to see each one of you here. So good to have you here today. So wonderful to be in the house of the Lord. Thank you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Testimony is powerful. I love testimony time. I think without testimony, we were not able to keep the devil shut his mouth. And right? the Bible says how the enemy is broken, his will and purpose over our life is true testimony. Uh, one of it is blood of the lamb. Uh, another one is testimony. And of course, not forgetting, uh, if you read the scripture very well, willing to lay down your life for Jesus. There's a three things actually will shut the devil off. Uh, they shut the devil off completely, completely. Amen. Hallelujah. This morning I got up um, very suppressed with my pet. Suddenly from nowhere, the battery just keep running low. So I, had to, I told the Lord, Lord, please don't fail on me. So I pray he will not fail on me. All right. So halfway preaching and then I lose all my focus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Ah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's pray for a while, all right? This is a Vesak Sunday, am I right? Uh, Vesak Sunday, of course, Christian, we do not, do not celebrate Vesak. <laughs> but, but the story about Vesak is about a man who's seeking for the truth. Uh, a man who was seeking for the truth and he sat under the bow tree for many, 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 many days to seek for the truth. And um, when the disciple asked him, the disciple asked him, uh, what is the truth? He told the disciple what? Do seek your own truth. I am still searching. Am I right? Huh? Those of you who come from the land of the Buddhist monk should know this very well. What is it? I'm also searching for the truth. You go, you seek for your truth. All right? And what they did is, because he wore a yellow robe, they all started wearing a yellow robe. He shaved his head ball, they all shaved the head ball. All right? So they took the vow of poverty because he was a king uh, coming from the prince. He was a prince in the palace, stepped out, became a king. Mind you, he's an Indian guy, eh? suddenly became an Asian fella, uh, a Chinese fella, you know. So he came from there and he saw the suffering and pain and he decided to seek for the truth, but still he did not find. And he told to the disciple, do what is right, seek for your own truth. And us as Christians, we know the truth, am I right? The Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father but through Him. So what you and I should do today? Let's pray for them. Because they are seeking for the truth. Yeah? May God reveal Himself to them. Hallelujah. May God reveal Himself to them. May they know it is the Jesus, the truth, that they should be seeking for. It is not the way of Buddhism, but it's the way of the cross. It's the way of Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Would you mind standing up to your feet right now, if you can? Come on, let's intercede for this special group of people. Oh, Father, we say thank you for the group of people that you have raised up in this nation. Lord, we know this group of people who believe in Buddha, who believe in Buddhism, oh God, who are celebrating this Vesak Sunday. Lord Jesus, as a church of God, our prayer is that you touch them. Our praise, O oh God, that you minister to them. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus. Come on, open up your mouth for a while. Come on, intercede your name. In the name of Jesus. Lord, touch the Buddhist. Touch the Buddhist. Touch our family members who are Believe in Buddhism faith, O God. Makusi kiri andara. Rutolundo roba kasi ke. Runo kozi makatala masuko. Ribaba bakatala masiki. Father Lord, they are still seeking for the truth, to God. They are still seeking for the truth, to God. In the name of Jesus, we raise them up into your hand. And Father, we pray right now that you will intervene. That you will intervene. Lord Jesus, we pray for the Buddhists. We pray for each one of them, O oh God, who are still seeking for the truth, who are still searching for the truth, who want to get absorbed in this nirvana, who want to get absorbed in this whole, all this heavenly way of doing things. But Father Lord, we come to you, we ask 
Reveal yourself to them. Let your presence come upon them. Lord Jesus, we pray, as they are seeking for the truth, give them the vision that Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father but through you, Lord. Therefore, we lift up every Buddhist to your hand today as they are celebrating this Vesak Sunday, Lord. Lord Jesus, our prayer is, may they come to know your goodness. May they come to know your love. May they come to receive your breakthrough. Lord Jesus, I pray that your blessing, that your grace and that your mercy will rest upon the life of these people, of oh Father. Let their eyes be open. Let their eyes be open. Let let the eyes be open in the name of Jesus. Let the eyes be open. Let them see your goodness and your mercy. So, Father, we lift them up into your hand and we give thanks for our family members who yet to come to know you as a Lord and Savior. And this morning, oh God, the message of Jesus is you love them. For God so loved the world that you sent your only begotten Son. For whoever believes in him shall have this everlasting life. For God did not send the Son to condemn, but to give them life. Life, life abundant. Therefore, Lord Jesus, we lift them up. May they come to know you as the Lord and Savior. Remove the blindness. Remove the blindness. Remove the evil intention who blind their eyes. Let them open. Let them open. Let them open in the name of Jesus. And let them come to know you as the Lord and Savior. So, Father Lord, we say thank you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name we pray in us. And all of you say, Amen, 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 Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you give me some bass? Uh? Because too much of trouble actually. A little bit bass, you know. Cut down the trouble, cut down the meat. A little bit of bass. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, that sound will be better. All right? Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Is there anyone here that you have been praying for this need, but yet to see it coming to pass? I think I spoke about it on Sunday. On this, I spoke about it on Thursday about it. You are praying for God to bless you with the house, with the property. Who is that? Is there anyone here? You're praying and say, God, I need to get a house for my family. I need to have my own property in my hand. Who is that? Can you stand up to your feet if there's anyone here? Because I felt that I should just pray for one of you. If you're here, would you mind saying, Karen? Thank you very much for standing up. Anyone else? Anyone else besides my dear sister, Bridget, that you're praying for a property, that you have a roof on your head for your family? All right? You don't have, yeah, God bless you, brother. Anyone else? You are praying for your property. Come on, I wanted to pray this. You know why? I think as a body of Christ, we should pray for this. Amen? We can, you can come in front. You can come in front, right? Anyone else here? We said these two brothers who are praying for property. And you want to get a roof on the head. You're going to have family to have a roof. Or maybe you are praying for God for a breakthrough. All right? Go ahead, come. All right? If you want to pray for that. I want to bless you all today. This is a very... I want to get Dr. Kwan to come and anoint you all. All right? He is a man who is honored by God in this area. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You want to pray for this? Come on, stand here. Yeah, correct. Thank you, Father. Lord, these are people who are asking for divine breakthrough. Go ahead, Dr. Kwan. Asking for divine breakthrough over their life. Asking for divine breakthrough over their life. Lord, as Elder Kwan lay his hand, as Pastor Kwan lay his hand on them, Lord, our prayer is, Lord Jesus, that you will bless them. That you will open up the door of blessing over their life. Lord, that every property that they have, oh God, will be given to them, Lord Jesus. Everything they are praying for. Come on, open up your heart for a moment. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Whatever property that they have, if it's not the Azuga, they have mortgaged it. Lord, I pray that you will bring a breakthrough that they were able to pay everything, O oh God, and able to have a roof on their head, Lord Jesus. Lord, that you will supply every need that they have for you, Lord. Anoint them, Lord Jesus. Touch them, O oh God. Let them have this supernatural breakthrough, O oh Father, Lord. 
Ribaba Kamasu Koriandara, Rimaturiandro Bakaziki. Come on, let's speak in the language of the Holy Spirit for a while. Runo Kuzimi Kuriandro Kai, Ikira Narabashibi Kuriandro Bakatilia Maturiandara, Rimama Katalamashiki Baturiandara, Rikaramashibi Kuriandro Kotoli, Rima Katalamashibi Kuriandro Bakatala. In the name of Jesus, Zima Kuburiandro, Ribaba Baba Shibi Kuriandro Bakatala. Breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. Rimako, breakthrough anointing of God to come upon them in the name of Jesus. Rakuziki Maturiandara, Runo Kuzimi Kuriandolo Bakatala. In the name of Jesus, Lima Kuturi, Father, Lord, provide them. Provide them. Lift up your hand up, brothers and sisters. Lord, provide each one of my brothers the property. Lord, they need a roof on their head and they stand before you. And as Pastor Kwan has anointed them as a pastor of the church, Lord Jesus, we seal this prayer over their life. Lord, we pray that in the six months to nine months that you will open up the door for them to acquire their own property. Lord Jesus, I pray there will be a supernatural breakthrough, supernatural open door, Lord, that they will be able to acquire a property, Lord, for themselves. Lord, no matter how big, how expensive it is, it is not a curtain, no, no, no issue on that, oh Father. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that they will able to see your divine provision, your divine giving, your divine unction to come upon them. Therefore, Lord, as they lift their hand up, I seal each of this prayer and I seal each of my brothers and sisters that you will be the provider, that you will be the giver. In Jesus' name we pray in us. And all of you say... Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. Turn, wait, 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 don't go no. Turn around, turn around, look at the people. Look at the people. You see these faces? All right? So remember them in your prayer, all right? So God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Is it wrong to own a property? No, it's not wrong, all right? It is wrong to own a property if you have too many of them. <laughs> and you can't pay it, all right? All right, if you can pay, praise the Lord. If you can't and too much of utang here and there, then you better not own a lot of property. I'm telling you because why I minister to a lot of people. People come and tell me, oh, pastor, no money, no money. I say, no money, no money. You know the song they sing, no money, no money, but, you know, no money, no money. When I sit down with them, I found out they, my goodness me, the amount of property they have, amount of car they have, and they say they got no money. Sometimes I feel like, I mean, you want to bluff also, don't bluff like that. Like, no. You know, when I go to church, I pray. Any one of you got financial situation. You know, suddenly I see from nowhere, lots of hand goes up. So after the service over, I go up with the pastor for the meal. I say, brother, your church, many of them got financial problem. Huh? And then one of the elders look at me, pastor. <laughs> Let me explain to you, pastor. All those people who lift up their hand up, they got three, four business. Out of three, four business they have, Pastor, maybe one business not making money. The rest are making abundance of money. But they're lifting up their hand up for their one business. They are not grateful, Pastor. So I thought for a while, how greedy some people are. They want more and more. Listen, God will bless you more and more when you learn to give more and more. The Bible teaches you to give. You want more? Learn to give. Your money, your time, your talent, your ability, your gifting. Learn to give. Then God will provide. I never had a car. I had a broken down car and God provide me a car from your pastor here. I'm not joking. He blessed me with a car. Of course, I paid a small amount, but it's still cheap. Then I never had a house. I prayed to God, Lord, I'm turning 40. You know? I'm turning for 45, Lord. I'm, 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 I need to get a house. My, my wife, you're married for 20 years. No house. And the owner came to us and said, listen, I'm selling this house. You've been here for a while. Would you like to buy the house? No question asked. Yes. How much? Never ask. Don't care about it. Just go and pick the money, put the deposit, and buy the house. Still paying, but praise the Lord. God is a provider. My beloved ones, what I'm saying to you, what I'm trying to tell you this is, if you do what God called you to do, God will honor you. He will bless you. I'm not saying God giving me many more property, only one. Beside my four children and a beautiful wife, and this is the only house I have and one car. All right, beside that, it's more than enough. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Amen. 
Today I have a, you know, this is a hot message, right? I just prepared it around 2 in the morning. So when I sent it to Akasi at 2 in the morning, that was when I finished my message. I asked the Lord, I want to speak to these people something very important. And I want to share to them something very important. We are in a great journey. All right, great journey. Hey, put, put, put the slide up. All right, we are in a great journey. Now let me start by this, by saying this. You are stronger than you think. Turn to your neighbor and say that. You are stronger than you think. I'm telling you that. You are stronger than you think. Shrama Life Assembly, you are stronger than you think. I have no idea what happened last week. Nobody actually tell me anything. But I prayed and I got, as I was reading through some of the article, this came across. And I want to remind you, whatever has happened is not important. Because you are stronger than what you think. Because God sees you in a different light. It is not the way how the man sees you, it is the way how God sees you. But if there are things that you find that does not follow God's plan and purpose, then you got to align it back. Then you got to come to a point and say, I got to put it right. But God is saying to you and saying to the church today that you are stronger than you think. The one that lives inside of you is greater than the one that is outside of you. The one that lives and resides in you is greater. He's greater. The one that is living in you has a power to resurrect you. Hallelujah. The one who lives in you has a power to renew you. The one who lives in you has a power to refire you. You just have to speak. The problem is we do not we do not open our mouth. When we go to a situation, we become dumb. The devil comes and dumb you. That's the problem with the Christian body. Suddenly, for no reason, you become dumb. Just do not know what to say because you're overwhelmed with the whole situation. But I want to remind you today, you are stronger than what you think. Lord wants to remind you in your heart that it's a greater thing that God is going to do for the church for this church, for this town, for this city, God has a bigger dream for you all. Bigger dream for you all. That's the sermon that I want to share to you. You see the little ends there? And that's the sermon that I want to share to you today on a stitching of the ends. You know, let's look at the scripture first. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6 to 11. Uh, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6 to 11 say what? Go to the end, you sluggard. Now, this is uh, Solomon. Solomon had a revelation from God and God spoke to Solomon. Solomon was a man of wisdom. So something to learn. So God said to Solomon to write this down. He said, go to the end, you sluggard. Sluggard. What is sluggard? What is sluggard? Lazy. Don't care. Tida apa. Huh? Consider its ways and be wise. Go to the ends. What, what, who is wise? The ends. <laughs> he has no commander, no overseer, no ruler. Ah, no pastor. No elder. No committee member. Yet he store his provision in summer and gather his food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? <laughs> when will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of hand to rest. Verse 11. And a poverty will come on you like a thief and sincerity like an armed man. I am speaking about this because my house have lots of ants for the past three months. And I don't know where they come from. But I have a habit to learn and study. So I watch them. I look at them. And the Lord took me to the scripture. And the Lord taught me a few things that I should learn about this. In fact, if you read the scripture, there's a lot of word of God that speaks about insect, animal, a lot of word of God that address such issues. A lot of things that is taught in the Bible. Use 
animal, insect kingdom to speak to her. He used even ox. In the book of Isaiah, he used an ass, a donkey, to talk to the prophet. <laughs> All right? He used rooster. Uh, remember? He used a rooster to talk to who? To Peter. <laughs> Three times the rooster will crow. Uh, he used donkey uh, to speak to Balaam. You know, if you read the whole thing here, you find that the Lord speaks about it. In this passage we just read, he is speaking about sluggard, referred to one who is lazy, idle, callous, strict to nothing, mind no business, bring nothing to pass. I don't know, I don't know who you are. Someone say, who is pastor talking to today? I'm talking to everybody, lah, including me also. All right? Because we fall in this category once in a while. Lah. We take our, we take ourselves into that field of getting lazy. I believe God wants to remind us it's not time to us to be lazy. Very interestingly, eh, uh, this writer said this, I think everybody should study ants. They have amazing four-part philosophy. You know what's that? Never give up, look ahead, stay positive, and do all you can. Alright? He says, study them. And Solomon brought a very good teaching about these ants. And I'm going to explore this. So I'm going to call it six Legged preacher. It's an ants, six legged preacher, right? There are 11,000 different kind of ants. I just went and did a little bit of reading. 11,000 different kind of ants. They are live in colony number from few to over 20 million. They are approximately one quadrillion. Wow, that's bigger than billion. Huh? That means more than human beings. All right? Ants in the world. In Malaysia, we have 23 ant species. Then I did a little bit more reading. Their most biggest ant colony is called the Argentina ant. And they are in Spain, in Europe, and Portugal. I don't know how come from Argentina they went there. All right? And they are called the Argentina ant. And they are a lot. And they are big colonies. So if you study ants, you will become wise. The Bible says you become wise. You become wise. So let's look at it today. The work of these little ants. Number one, all right? The ant work is partnership. The ant works in partnership. Now, that's very interesting. If you look at the ants, they work in partnership. They do not work alone. They work together. So as a church, we need to learn from the ants to work together. Our network, our network, should be together that build our net worth. Our network should be together that build our net worth. The two words there. So we need to come together to build the synergy, the strength, the anointing that God wants us to build upon. So they end work in partnership. And how do they do that? They work in love. Have you seen the end when they pass by? They use the two antenna. They start kissing each other. Now that is to communicate. They work in no fight. Have you seen the end fighting and same colony fighting? No. Different colony, yes. But the same colony never fight. They come together. They touch each other. Communicate just by the touch. They already given all the message. You know? I did that. The ants in my house, the black color one. I kill one ant. I kill one ant, you know. Then another ant came, saw that one ant die, make a U-turn, went back and give communication to one ant and one ant communicate to another ant and what happened the next? The ant decided to make a U-turn. No U-turn. Bypass. Bypass the dead ant. Do not pass that way. Bypass it, go somewhere else. And guess who gave the communication? The end that about to die. Not the end. The end that about to die communicated to this end. Don't come here. Tell to your friends. But church are very different, huh? Very funny in a church. When we tell people, don't do this. Oh, you jealous. 
Because you have everything, ma. That's why now you tell me I shouldn't do ah. Have you heard of the kind of talk? Oh, he 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 has he has achieved it lah. That's why he's telling me. But do you know some people gone to the hard school of knock. They know what is right and what is wrong. And sometimes hearing them help you to walk better. You know I do then. When I don't get things right, I call the people. If I if I do not understand medicine, I call Doctor Kwan. You ask him. I call. If I got a banking issue, I call a banker. If I got a, a stock issue which I need to get clarity, I I don't buy stock, but I have people want to buy stocks. They ask me like as if I have all the answers. I say, listen, let me check with somebody. I call. Why? Because I want to learn so that I will not be a shipwreck. So we find the land work in love. Not only they work in love, they are helpful. They are helpful. Help carry burden. Injured neighbor. Have you seen sometimes some ends? They will even carry the injured neighbor. If he never died, they will carry that end back to the. Sit down now. Go back home and watch the end now. Maybe today you should go back home and do that. It's tomorrow public holiday, ma. Ah, uh, they carry burden, injured neighbor, resource. They, they find ants who fall in the pit. They pick them up. They are helpful. Very helpful. Small ants, all together will carry one grain of rice. And they were together. They carry and go part by part, and shift, shift, shift. And even how high the hill is, the small grain of rice will slowly go up. Right to the top of the hill, very helpful. But we, the brother sisters, ah, my goodness me, we are ready to say something. Why so stupid are you? Why don't we come alongside? The end never tell another end. Why you so stupid? Why you so silly? What the end do? They start walking together. They try to show the better way. This is how we should do it. That's why the Lord came down. Why Jesus came down? Because nobody can come to Him. He brought everybody. You know, He brought Abraham, Moses. He brought all the leaders in the read the Old Testament. He gave them judge. He gave them king. He gave them prophet. He gave them everybody. Nobody can bring them to God. So God said, "That's it. What I spoke in Genesis, that seed will come, and the time will come for the seed to come. And that's why Jesus came, because nobody can take us back to God unless God willing to come down and lead us back to Him. No human." Even how righteous you are, even how good you are, even how wonderful you talk, you are still filthy wreck, and you are a sinful person. And there's no way you can come and bring people to God. They said Jesus has to come down, walk with the men, walk with men, talk with them, show them how to pray, show them how to find. The way back to God again. Show them how to behave. Now all these things supposed to be done by the temple. But what did the temple did? They came up with rules and regulation. They put more problem than solution. And that's what happened to the church also today. We got so many regulation. So not even a non-believing fellow can walk in because we have rules and regulation that we have placed in the church. If you see someone walking in very punky, nose ring here, nose ring here, nose ring everywhere, lah. You all start looking at the person like that. I God taught me this very well. One day from nowhere, someone walked into my church when I was still early stage of serving the Lord. He came to the church, young man, long hair, thin, scrunchy fella, thin. So I look at him. I said, "Let me just get to know him a little bit." When I speak to him, 
I said, uh, hey, good to see you. What's your name? Get to know each other. Came from northern side of Malaysia. Gifted. Never knew that he was actually a good graphic designer, a very good graphic designer. Drew a lot of naked ladies. Very good drawing. Precise drawing. Detail. You know? Hey, not easy to draw a naked lady, right? You got to be very gifted. So do not insult drawing. Art, this is art. This is not last. Maybe they are suffering with their own journey. Good robotic drawing, or he draw beautiful artic. But he has a problem. He's messy, smelly, like never take shower like that. So I took him one day out for makan, and he eats so messy, food just fall every day from his mouth. It's just messy, fella. Then the Lord told me, take him to your house where you're renting. Because he needs a place to stay. Minister to him. Then I told the Lord, Lord, please, I'm living a very happy life. <laughs> my home, my bedroom, my house. In fact, it's not even my house. The house actually belongs to a, a pilot, a captain. Most time he's flying outside. So he's not in the house. His house is belong to him, but he's not in the house. So the house become mine. So I manage the house, I keep the house clean. It's basically... I'm there most of the time. He's just flying in, flying out, flying in. So I'm only paying a peanut rental because he managed to manage the house for him and I was just enjoying myself. I said, God, no way. Not another person coming in. I want to have peace. My roof, my house. I want to have good time resting. No, the Lord says, take him in. Minister to him. So after for a while, I went to speak to my landlord. I said, listen, you know, can I get this young man coming to stay with us? The guy said, fine, you are alone here. Yeah, we got extra room, why not? Get him in. So he got a bigger heart than me. Terrible pastor, huh? So he got in the house, stayed there. You know, but the Lord says, show love to him. Messy fella. One day I walked to his room, I nearly died. <gasps> the fragrance, they come from the room. Not the nice one. The sweaty, oh my goodness me. I mean, I'm a kind of guy who wear perfume. If you got a bottle, I will pour it on my whole body. You know, I'm the kind of guy, my wife will tell me when they're dating me, she can still remember all the perfume I have. I'm a very particular guy in this area. Must have deodorant. And those of you who do not wear deodorant, please, 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 I beg you, wear deodorant. You know, I'm a kind of guy who does that. Look neat, look nice, smell good. You know, nothing wrong to look good, all right? Iron your clothes, look good, stand out nice, comb your hair. My children, my boys get sick for me every day. And it becomes a music in the house. Um, I mean, so I, I went to God. I said, God, what? You put this guy here in my life. Then slowly I got to know him. Slowly I learned to study him. He came from a very difficult journey. His father is a suicidal case. The whole kampung, they know about it. So that has built up rejection, anger in his heart. And I was broken by the Holy Spirit and stepped there to help him out. And praise be to God, he is a much better man now. Married, have family, working for the biggest company, coming to media, God have honored him. But we need to be helpful. There are people who are going to come into our ministry that you won't like it. I'm telling you that. It's not in your feathers. Same bird, you know. No, no, no. It's not. They're going to come in. They're going to look different. They're injured. They're broken. They're troubled. Would you be a good helping hand to them? Next, the end, operate in harmony. Someone did a test on sound. They found that the end has a certain frequency of sound that it harmonizes. Now, I can't get that sound. I wish I could have got it. It harmonizes. There is a kind of a music while they're doing their work. They harmonize. They operate in harmony. When there is a weak end, a weak end will withdraw a stronger end to take over. 
Each of them has a job. They do not say, hey, that's your job, ma. No. They automatically step in the picture. They do not say, oh, this is his job, ma. They automatically say, no, no, we'll take over, don't worry, you rest. That's why today we find in the church, we have so many burn Christian. Why? Because they are doing, 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 doing the work and they cannot handle it anymore and they get burned up. They are really living a sacrifice life. Surah become charcoal. We have too many of them in church. There are so many pastors in church are burned up because why? They are doing everything. Even prayer, the pastor needs to pray. If he doesn't pray, you know, I've been in ministry for 30 over years. There are times that I like to sit on the prayer meeting not praying, just keeping quiet. But I can't. Because if I do that, everybody quiet. You know, I love to do that. I love to come to prayer meeting, just keep myself quiet before the Lord. But sometimes it can be so quiet, everybody can fall asleep. I know you like soaking, but some soaking go to deep sleep. <laughs> I also like soaking, but I like with music, with worship, with word. Since I have a past time sitting there, I say, God, I, I, tell, I will tell my wife, today I'm not going to pray, I'm going to keep quiet. After for a while, I see everybody quiet, nobody praying, nobody saying anything. Half an hour passed by. 40 minutes pass by, all looking at each other. Why Pastor Groom is very quiet? Then I go, no choice. Lord, what should I do? Son, pray, son. So I pray. My beloved ones, we need to work in harmony. We need to come to a point and say, hey, they, they end weak. They take over. We need to come like that in a church. Hey, you are tired, you're exhausted. Let me take over from you. Let me handle that for you. Don't worry, it's okay. I'll take you over. Don't need to have someone tell you, please do it. That's the biggest struggle we have in today's children's world, the millennium. Tough. You've got to instruct them. You've got to tell them one, two, three, four, five, six, what to do. If you don't tell them, they only do one thing only. Like my son. I tell him, please sweep the corridor. Sweep only. Sweep. Where's the rubbish? Still there. I look at him. I say, what are you going to do with the rubbish? I said, you stay sweep only, bar. See, you told me sweep only. So I'm scratching my head. Those days when you tell me sweep, huh, the whole place, that means take and throw the rubbish. Garbage. But today, no. Sweep only, ma. So now you got to give the instruction. Sweep and make sure throw the rubbish, okay? <laughs> they work in harmony. They operate in harmony. Just like the body of Christ, we need to operate in harmony. They work toward a common goal. Common goal. What is the common goal? Take the food to the nest. Take what? Food to the nest. Whatever they do, they are building their colony. Whatever they do, they are building their home. Because there is where the queen is. Take the nest. So what the church must do? What is our common goal? The Lord Jesus, He is our common goal. He is everything to us. What Jesus' heartbeat? What is the heartbeat of heaven? If you were to hear the heartbeat of heaven now, what is the heartbeat of heaven? None shall perish. None shall perish in all Get saved lah. That's the heartbeat of heaven, am I right? So just like this, have a common goal to bring people to have food coming to their nest. Our common goal is to see people coming to Jesus. And to have people coming to Jesus, therefore we must have some characteristic. Am I right? Now that's something that you might have to explore in your journey as a believer. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9 to 10, it says, well, For we are God fellow workers. For we are God fellow workers. Isn't it wonderful? 
Here the writers, uh, Paul, say what? We are not just a servant, but we are God co-workers, click partner. For we are God fellow workers, you are God's field. God's building according to the grace of God given to me. Like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation. Someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he built upon it. Paul said, I've done my job. Now you take care how to build on it. So today what we are doing in this house, as we are hearing the word, we want to build on what the Holy Spirit wants to build. What the Lord wants Strama Life Assembly to be. What the Lord wants you to be. As you are seated in this house today, what the Lord speaking to you personally. In your journey, what the Lord saying to you. What the Lord speaking into your heart. How are you going to build what God has given to you? If you've got a home, build your home to be a house church that is vibrant. If you're a worship leader, build your worship ministry that's vibrant. If you're a pastor, build your pulpit ministry that's vibrant. Am I right? If you're a businessman, build your business to be vibrant. Wherever God has placed you, if you're a mother, build your motherhood vibrant. If you're a father, be a father with vibrancy. Wherever God has blessed you, build upon it. Because we are God's workmen. And that's what the ants did. Their job is to build the colony. Their job is to build the nest. Their job is to make sure that that nest will produce more ants. So you and I, our job is to make sure that we do the same. Remember the story about the four fellows who carried the men on the roof and lowered it down to the Lord. And for, have you remember the story? Uh, these four fellows came, you know, these four fellows came and brought his paralyzed friend and they tried to get into the building, cannot get in because too crowded. So they look and say, oh goodness me, we can't do it. One of them say, hey, why don't we do it on the roof? And they went up on the roof, opened up the roof and slowly, you know, it's not easy to lower down a paralyzed man. Have you ever done that before? I know, I know because why I have to carry a man in a church every Sunday Four story, no lift. He is paralyzed. He is on wheelchair and we have to lift him. And every week he start to put on weight. And we who carry him up can tell him, hey brother, you put on weight. Ah. It's not joke to carry this guy up there. And by the time I reach to the time he gone so huge, I say, listen, we need to get more hand. Pastor, got to fix the lift. We can't carry this guy anymore. Oh, this guy carried a paralytic man from the roof down. I mean, they got to be very good. Otherwise, they would have landed him down and became dead men. What impressed the Lord was this, that they never allow circumstances and situation to stop them to see that one miracle, not only miracle for the nation Israel, not only miracle to the ministry that is going on, but to add another miracle in the life of Jesus. Do you know that? By him lowering down this, this, this pillar, they added another miracle in the ministry of Jesus. That people could see a divine touch of God over this man. Why? Because there was four fellas crazy enough, cuckoo enough, mad enough, to go through that extra mile to see the friend touched by the grace of God. We need this kind of cuckoo mind, <laughs> crazy people today, who are willing to go and say, listen, you want the touch of God? Follow me to church. You want God to speak to you? Follow me to church. I had a brother came in yesterday. He said, Pastor, I came last Sunday. I'm here this Sunday. I have been looking for lead for the past six months. But after coming to Mother's Day, you prayed, for me, you pray for my children, single father. He said, Pastor, I want to let you know, the lead I have is six months. I could not close the lead. But last one week, I closed three leads. Thank you, Pastor, for your prayer. Thank you, Pastor. 
Once I get the money, I'm going to bless to the ministry. Because God has given me three leads, which I could not close for six months. My beloved, maybe you can bring somebody in the house of God. They are looking for relationship healing. Maybe when they come to church as they sit before God, something happened in their system. And their relationship heals, starting from them. I don't know what kind of situation and condition you are in, but the Lord calls us a fellow workers also. Now, the end works productivity. Uh, the end always very productive. What does he do? Uh, ants have all volunteer service. Do you know that? If you read, you watch the ants' life, they are very voluntary. Even. No like, a, oh, you do, I do, no, no. Nobody guide them. What the Bible says, no leader, nobody. No leader, no instructor, no counselor. Today in a church, there's no pastor. People say, why go no pastor? Get a pastor lah. Once you get a pastor, then they will not serve the God anymore. Why not go pastor him? We are paying him. Let him do the job lah. Have you heard of this kind of talk? I heard a lot of this kind of talk too. Is he wrong? Depend how you see. To me, it's the body of Christ working together. Not one man working for the body of Christ. It's the body of Christ working together. So the end, they have no, no guy, nobody leading them. They come together, they agree. Let's do it, let's follow, let's go. They will all follow the same line. Have you seen that? They never go out of the line. Semua, one line. You put a stick there and see, they'll go by the stick. They never get distracted because their communication is clear. Go straight. After that, turn left. After that, turn right. That's it. Oh, nobody guide them. Nobody lead them. Isn't it wonderful we have the same Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. We have the same Holy Spirit that lead us, that guide us, that take us in a journey together. The same Holy Spirit gives us wisdom and guidance in what we do. We have the same Holy Spirit. Number two. And labor according to their own ability. Ah, this is something that I did my research a little bit. And labor according to their own ability. Do you know in the end colony, there are storekeepers. Their job is to keep stock. <laughs> and you know, in the end, uh, 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 they, they have engineers. They go nurses. They go farmers. They go laborers. Wow, when I did this reading, I said, Woo-yo, what a journey meant to be an ends. They got their own system to manage their own community of people. <laughs> to manage their own colony. They will not, they use their ability to do it. Some of you here have great ability to cook. Cook lah. Some of you got the ability to sing. Sing. Some of you got the ability to arrange chair. Arrange chair lah. Some of you got the ability to clean up the building. You know, there are some people got the ability to clean up mess. I'm not joking to you. One, one of them is my wife. You know, I can put her in a condition, the whole place is messy. Messy to the core. She can walk in and look at it. And I say, you sure you can clean this? Yeah, give me some time. At the end of the day, something has happened. When I walk into the room, I see she has done the job. You know, when I see mess, I do not know how to clean. Don't know where to start. But there's some people just know how to do it. And mind you, she's not throwing everything away. There's some people throw la, buang la, buang la, buang la, buang la, buang la. No, she doesn't. She know how to arrange it, how to put it right, which, where, and where it should go. Why? Because that's a gifting. That's what the Bible says. God has given us a church that kind of gifting. People with different talent, different capacity, different knowledge. Let's all work together to build what God wants to build. God is teaching for, through Solomon's observation. Solomon is telling to the nation. All of us labor according to our ability. What is your ability today? Some of you come and say, Pastor, I got no strength. I cannot work. I cannot work, Pastor. Body all very bad. Arm all very bad. But can you pray? But well, pastor, I cannot. 
pray. Can you pray? Can you call a person? Hello, how are you? Last Sunday, never see you in church. Huh? All okay? Huh? Just call to see you. Lah. Okay? Huh? God bless you. Huh? Do you call people who don't come to church for this Sunday? Look around the chairs. Those people have not turned up the church. Would you like to call them up tomorrow and tell them, let me take you for a cup of tea? Visat ma, holiday. Do you need your pastor to tell you, open up your house for cell group? No what? Can you open up your house? Just open up. Have something going on in the house. Just give a call to your pastor. Tell your pastor, I'm having my house open. I'm inviting two, three people to come. If you're nice, if you can drop in. He might drop in. He might not drop in. Don't get angry. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you here, this is how you build the work of God. Your own ability, understand? I, I, I'm, I'm trying a new dish. You know, food in Malaysia, very famous one. I'm trying a new dish. You can call the whole world to come already. Do you know? Just by cooking one new dish, you can start having an evangelism. Do you know that? I'm trying a new dish. I want you to give a shot to it. How does it taste like? Just cook a dish. You already fill your house with people. They come. They want to enjoy some of them. They know you're a good cook. Oh, I want to go for holiday. Don't go holiday alone. Nah. Take a team and go holiday. Is it wrong? No. There are a lot of old people who have nobody taking them for holiday. This church can be that organizing team. Get two, three bus. Let's go holiday to Pera. Go and see all the leading tower. La. All la, take picture. La. All take picture. La. All the bus can talk the story. La. Sing the song. Hey, you know what I'm saying to you? You cannot come and tell me I don't know what to do. Come and sit down with me one hour. I'll give you one list. There's so many things we can do as a body of Christ. There's some foreigners who come from different parts of the world. They work and work and work and nearly die. They have never been to the beach. They have never been to the island. None of them gone to the Kemal Highland or Genting or never, never enjoy cold air. Never enjoy waterfall. I get a bus, I get them in the bus, I take them for waterfall. They bring all kind of food with them. One of them brought even the whole pork, you know, cut into pieces. Really. Oh, bring it along with them. I still remember this trip with the Cambodian guys. Went to the stream to swim with them. And they barbecuing. I said, listen, don't barbecue public. A lot of Malay people here. <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you, it is just somebody who can step out and say, I'll do it. And work continually. <laughs> and uh, never rest. Have you seen them resting? Never rest. Night, morning, afternoon, you will see them traveling from your door, you know. They pass by. Hmm. So I was standing there and said, hey, you don't rest, ah? I said, you guys don't sleep, ah? They keep working. I get up to in the morning to drink water, go around, drink, I still see them moving. No rest. Some of the best part now moving alone. They carry something along with them also. Wow. Oh, you know, my sister, huh? you are just like me, man. We are watching it. And work continually. But you ask the church to work continually. What about what the church said? Work continually. What continually are you supposed to work? Pray lah. The Bible says what? Pray continually. But some people say enough lah, pastor. Tired lah. But why is the scripture say pray continually? Why? Why? Why you think that word is written there? Accident lah. You mean the author put it accidentally there? Why did Jesus told to the disciple? Watch with me for an hour so temptation will not overtake you. There is an enemy who come against you to overtake you. He wants to overtake your mind. He wants to overtake your feeling. He wants to overtake your thoughts. He wants to overtake you in every area of your life. So the Lord told to the disciple, watch with me for an hour. What do you do? Watch, watch, watch me. Don't talk or so can. Watch lah. Watch, Jesus. Watch what? Watch three lah. Watch ants. Walk at a stream. Watch. Karana. Look at the sunlight. Once you see the sunlight, Lord, thank you for the bright morning day. Thank you for the birds. 
Thank you, Lord, for the giving of life. Watch. Watch your own body. Watch. Stand in the mirror. I know some of you are not happy with your body. Who cares about it? No one watching. You are watching. Strip yourself naked. Stand there and watch. Some of you say, no, I don't want to watch. Say, no, 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 no. But the Bible says, love yourself also. How are you going to love somebody when you cannot love yourself? Rejoice what God has given to you. Rejoice your hand. Rejoice your leg. Rejoice your eyes. Some people come and tell me, Pastor, your eyes so nice. Look at me. I need the eyelashes like yours. Sorry, I'm a Punjabi. You are a Chinese. Won't happen. <laughs> but you can go and buy the fix on one. Uh. What I'm trying to tell you, they work continually. Never stop. Pray. Continually give it thanks to God. You know, I, I learned this from now on. From, from two years of the issues that we're going through, I learned to thank God every day. Thank you, Lord, for day. Thank you, Lord. I get up every morning. I cry to God, Lord, have mercy. Thank you for your mercy. Lord, have mercy upon me. I, I, you know, as a pastor, I cry, God, please have mercy on me. Have mercy on my family. Have mercy on my children. I want to testify today. My son, Roshan, had a stomach condition. It troubled us so much. He's losing weight. I spoke to the sister, supposed to get her connected to go and see CT scan. So he's losing weight. Wow. We are getting very worried about Roshan. And... Um, we're wondering what's happening to this boy. We thought maybe the two years of uh, um, COVID MCO have caused him to do that, lose weights and all. We also thought that his, his family, my, my, my wife said, are all thin and tall. So maybe because it's genetic. You know? Wow. Then I said, okay, let me go and see a doctor, a friend of ours. So they did a normal scan, you know, normal, the ultrasound scan. Once they did the ultrasound scan, he was very concerned because he saw a enlargement around the rectum area. It's swollen. He said, it's swollen there. Then he hear, as you were doing it, he can hear that it's a wet, wet feeling in his stomach. So he said he's very concerned about this. He started antibiotic over him. Uh, in that same time, I got whatever he gave me. They did also the cancer marker test. Did everything. The marker test came back clear. No cancer, nothing clear. So I felt very happy. Then I have another doctor in Slayang. She said, no, Pastor Grimit, he has to go to colonoscopy. We've got to check everything from the bottom to the top. One shot, we do it. So I make an arrangement. Took him for the CT scan first. They found out the same problem in the CT scan. Or all the thing, they had a little bit of stomach at the rectum area, also got problem. Well, I say, God, what's happening? Then the colonoscopy did. Then the doctor did his colonoscopy, showed me that the rectum is swollen and there is, what they call that, um, ulcer. Swollen and ulcer. And there's also ulcer in his stomach. And uh, I could see the ulcer in the stomach, all blood, blood spots. And I said, doctor, what is it? What is the issue here? She said, we do not know. But I said, the blood test shows that there's no cancer marker. He said, you cannot believe in blood test, Grimit. You gotta, this is the only thing you can do is believe in biopsy. Wow, well, the whole two weeks, I'm preaching to you all, I'm teaching to you all, I'm declaring God's word to you all, I'm going through a journey the two weeks. But I never showed you all. Did you saw it? No? Why? Because I, me and my wife, we were just trusting God. You know, we were just trusting God. We prayed, we stood there, then the doctor sent a report. It's agreement not all complete yet, right? But the biopsy shows that your son is free from cancer. There is no cancer, all right? So we did a biopsy. They took a lot of specimen from the stomach, from the rectum, so he's free from cancer. Then yesterday, two days ago, he, she sent me said, one final report not out yet, but the report that we have is either your son have an um, intolerance bowel syndrome or he might be gluten um, uh, problem. That means he has a gluten problem. It's either these two things only. Besides that, he's fine. Uh, at the end of the year, we'll do another test on his rectum one more time. 
see how he's functioning, but he's perfectly good for now. Everything is good for him. So I was like, whoo, wow. I say, praise the Lord. You know, but as a pastor, I was going through the night. I was looking at him every night. I go sit down beside his bed. I cry with him. I pray for him. I mean, my heart was good. That boy is a special character. His, his name is Roshan. Roshan means light. Ness, Ness means miracle. And I cried to God. I said, God, this is a light that brings miracle. And praise be to God. So now we're just waiting for the final report, whether he's actually having a, uh, what do you call it, uh, intolerance, uh, bowel syndrome, or he's having a gluten. I pray he doesn't even have all those problems. Maybe he just had a very major infection and God kind of healed him from all the condition after much prayer. Amen. That's our prayer. Continue to pray for him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Isn't it? So how, how did it work? People came alongside with me to pray. I have people who come and pray alongside with me, call me up and pray with me. Say, Pastor, let us pray. I have people who pray for me online, gave me prayer. And I got people who, I mean, they stood by me. What I'm trying to tell you, we need to pray continually, not stopping. Our prayer must be continued. Don't give up in praying for your family. Don't give up praying for your children. Don't give up praying for your husband, your wife. Don't give up praying. I know a woman who is totally separated from the husband, still praying for the ex-husband. He said, I'm not going to give up. Some, after much of prayer, they have come to unite again. God brought them back again. What I'm saying to you, God has a way of doing things. Amen? Not you, huh? God, huh? He got a way to do things. He's a fixer. He'll fix it. What the Bible says, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Now, this, of course, speaks about biological multiplication. One of the ways to interpret the scripture. Another way to interpret the scripture is also mean be productive. Right? You can, the basic text here speaks about increase in number. All right? But you can also look at it as be productive. Do not, do not use what is given to you and waste it away. If God has given you the gift to study and to become a teacher, be one and be a good one. If God has made you to be a doctor, be one, be a good one. If God has made you to be a pastor, be one and be a good one. If God has called you to be a cameraman, be one and be a good one. Study it. Those days when we used to get into instrument, play drums, and play, we go and learn ourselves. We pay for the classes. We buy our own guitar. We buy our own keyboard. If that's what God has called you, invest it. I study. Recently, we started an online church in my church. I used to, used to do Zoom all the while. Just past one month from Raya time, I, I got my children to come alongside with me and we started a broadcasting, physical and online. And I have no equipment because our church in KL have no money yet. We are community services. And I, and I say, God, how I have my old equipment. I pull out all my old equipment and I use two computers to run it. My children say, very difficult, Papa. Not working so well. And just yesterday, we solved the whole problem. We got all the thing working yesterday. And I was standing there with my son. And my son looked at him. Not bad after all, and then, Yeah, not bad, la, son. We got it done. Nah. And I'm thinking for a while. At this age, after 30 over years old, I'm doing all this. Why I'm doing all this? I should be one, you know, a general sitting down and talking like this. Nah, and you guys doing all the job. Am I right? But I'm doing all this. Why? Why? I say, God, why you ask me to do it? Now I learn to appreciate people more. Lah. Appreciate the sound man. Appreciate the cameraman. You know, if anything goes wrong in the church, one sound gets flicker, all of it turns yes. <laughs> Am I right? Huh? One sound goes wrong. <laughs> like, but, 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 but. That guy be sitting there. <laughs> be fruitful. Be productive, learn, study. If you feel that you need to grow, grow together. 
in a Christian knowledge, don't just come to church, sit down and listen. Go and explore the Word of God. Divide the Word of God. Let the Word of God be the source of strength. Bible college, no, there's a lot of Bible college here. STM is here. Huh? You can come and join the revival service. I'm teaching on some subject there. You find time to be. There's no more excuses, huh? Be multiply. Fill the earth. Fill the earth with what? Not just babies, you know. Uh, people think, oh, babies. Uh, fill the earth with babies. Well, fill the earth with babies. Okay, lah. Fill the earth with what? Fill the earth with... How do you fill the earth? Fill the earth with talents, gifting, knowledge. Come on, Christian faith, ah, uh, Not making babies only, no. Study Christian faith. Study the history of the church. They don't just make babies and multiply babies. No. They bring education where there's no education. They bring nursing program where there's no nursing program. They start hospital where there's no hospital. They start infrastructure where there's no infrastructure. They come with system. That is what the church did in the early days. They put things into order. Am I right? Where there's no school, they bring school. Where there's no place, they teach. You go to Trangano, you find so many grammar school. And that's what? Who, who, who the owner of the school? All Christians. They start grammar school. They start English classes. They start all these things. Who? The Christians. Nursing, all the nursing program in Malaysia started by the church. All the school that you have today, the best that we have. But what happened now? We need to come back, huh? Just opening up your mind. 1 Corinthians 4, 27, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of... So time to show some action. You see the ends, huh? Hey, don't mess with the ends, you know. Do you know the colony ends, huh? If they come in a big number, even how big the elephant is, the elephant will run away. Do you know they're not? Huge animal, when he see the colony of ants, he runs away. But very small, ma. But how come this big fella run away? When the ants pass by, nobody dare to come close to them. Go la, where the red ants. Go stand there la. Black ants, okay la. Go, go stand red ants and see what happened to you. They will chew you up, brothers. One bite only you scratching them. Huh? One bite only you scratching them, right? Thousand bite how? One bite only you rushing for piriton. Piriton, antihistamine, antihistamine. Thousand bite how? I think you'll be pouring it, antihistamine. Hey, it's a power. It's not a talk. Stop talking. Let's get involved. Let's get doing. Let's get our hand in the plow. Let's get going. My beloved ones, this is the time that we are living in post C19, post COVID. It is not a time to sit down, smell. No, it is time to just go on doing the work of God. Not a talk, talk. Enough lah. Talk so chukopla. Let's get going. Parents day coming, huh? 30 ringgit are not much, you know. Go and get your neighbor's parents to come and join for the dinner. Am I right now? Go, go to your taman, find parents who got no children coming to visit them. Can you come and join uncle for our Parents' Day celebration? Go, please, invite them. 30 ringgit, one parent only. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 7, 14, 14, 14, 14, 14, 20, 14, 14, 28. How many of you here? Around, around 30 fellas, 40 fellas here, 50 fellas here, huh? 50 people here. 50 of you just bring one parent. Ah yeah, full house ready lah. Full house ready. Then you just spend time talking to them, one parent. Love them. Old people are not difficult to love, you know. Just love them. Just manja them. Ayo, auntie. Ayo. Oh, yo. Is it auntie? Oh, yo. That's it lah. Oh, Pastor Gumi, you're teaching a skill. Eh? Yes, that's it. Don't tell them they are wrong. Just tell them, ah, oh, after one hour, only tell them, Auntie, not like that, you know, Auntie. Don't immediately tell them, No, 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 Auntie, no. Don't do that. 
Never tell the old people straight. No, 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 no. Never. Just keep quiet. After one hour later, actually, auntie, I thought about what you're saying. Actually, not right now. Ah, then they will listen to you. For the first one hour, they want you to listen to them. Power. You already have a ministry here for the old people, am I right? There's an Abdullah home running. Brother, you already have a platform. Majestic platform. Because in Malaysia, there are a lot of old people now. You can touch them. You can reach them. And those of you who are getting old, be part of the ministry. Be part of it. Give one hour, two hours, three hours to the ministry and see what happens. And I like to come alongside, sister, if I can. One of the lessons we can take from this is the fact that there's plenty to do, but no workers. Plenty to do, but no workers. We got too many mandor, enough. We want workers. What the Bible says, Luke 10 verse 2, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore to the Lord of harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. You cannot see laborers coming unless you pray. Are we praying for laborers? When is the last time the church you pray for God bringing pastors, bringing teachers, bringing missionaries, bringing evangelists, bringing prophet, bringing apostles? Did you pray for that? When the last time you prayed for that? Maybe you should do now. Can we do that now? Would you mind standing up to your feet right now? Let's pray for that. Lord, we stand before you right now. We bring, oh God, the laborers. Lord, your word says, pray for the Lord of harvest. Lord, you are the Lord of harvest today. Lord, we stand before you. We pray for laborers. We pray for laborers to come. We pray for laborers to come. Bring in laborers into this field. Bring in laborers, oh God, into the house. Lord, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you will raise up Sunday school teachers. You will raise up youth leaders. You will raise up youth pastors. You will raise up children pastors. You will raise up, oh God, women pastors. You will raise up, oh God, family pastors. You will raise up, Lord Jesus, oh God, marketplace pastors. Lord, you will raise up teachers, evangelists, prophet, apostle. Oh God, you will raise up pastors in the field of us. Lord, we pray for laborers who will do the work of the ministry. Come on, agree with me. Who will do the work of the ministry. Who will go out to reach, to touch, to bless the life of people, oh God. We pray for laborers to come. Laborers to come. Laborers to come. We stop here, all right? Can I get a musician to come? Pray for laborers. Come and open up your mouth right now. Lord Jesus, we pray for laborers. Laborers. Riba katalama shikiri andara. Open up your heart. Lord, we pray for laborers in the field. We pray for the pastors right now. We pray for the leaders in the house of God, in the church of God. We pray for the elders. We pray for all their husband and wife. We pray for the elder. We pray for the wife of the elder. We pray, Lord Jesus, for the children, the family members. We lift them up into your hands. Lord, we ask that you raise up raise up laborers, O oh God. Raise up laborers, O oh God. Raise up laborers. Oh, raise up laborers, O oh God. Rima kuriandara ba katalama shikiriandara. Laborers among the old people, O oh God, the elderly ones. Laborers, O oh God, among those who are not well in their body, terminally skeet. You know, one of the laborers that I'm praying for, I'm be praying for right now is what they call doctor, the the person actually coming to the last day of his life. But this person is kind of can prepare them for the last day. What they call them? There's a name for them. Huh? Medical. They they prepare the people to to enter into their last days. Uh, they they are they are gifted people. They are. They will teach the person because they are, they are terminal sickness. They are trim, they're dying. Uh, they're, trim, they're already preparing them into, into their journey of last days. Do you know that itself is a ministry? In, in Western country, they have this. But Malaysia, uh, uh, something like that. Terminal, but there's a name for them. There's a name for them. In Malaysia, we don't have it. I forgot what the name is. They go and help. They sit down with the patient. They prepare the patient and they prepare the patient family. To, 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 to go to the walk of the life, last day of that family. You know, that's, that's gifting. That's a ministry itself. That's a ministry itself. And I'm praying God, I, I, because I come across many of them are not able to let go. 
not able to let go. They are still holding on. So that pain and suffering is upon the family. Pain and suffering is upon their home. But they are already living in a very difficult life. And I, I have ministered to some of them and I find it's a good way of them to release release their money, release their wealth, release their family, release their children. And when they start doing that, slowly, they start to drift into eternity. Release unforgiveness, anger, hatred, slowly. Then the family start releasing the man or mother. And slowly as they release, they find that the individual start to release into eternity. This is anointing. My beloved, we are faced with many of these things. We need a lot of calling, a lot of laborers. Am I right? All right? We need a lot of laborers. Father, Lord, we lift our hand. Lord, we know that we are also laborers in the field. But we are not equipped in every aspect of the ministry, O oh God. Lord Jesus, as we lift up our hand to your hand, we can't keep doing everything, O oh God. But Lord Jesus, I know that we have a call from you. Therefore, Lord, we pray as a Lord of Harvest, we ask you that you will bring in laborers who are able to walk in and comfort life, touch life. Lord, just like we learn from the ends today, Lord, we learn. We learn how to live our life today. It is not by accident, oh God, Solomon brought this teaching to the people of God to remind us, O oh God, that we can learn and be wise. As we're living in these last days, oh God, we need to be wise. We need to have wisdom and understanding and clarity. I come against all the clouded mind. I come against all the clouded mind. I come against all the roadblock in mind. I come against oh God, all the roadblock in mind. I arrest that in Jesus' name. I arrest that in Jesus' name. Oh, we bless you. This is my desire. You know what I'm saying? Let's sing it. Jesus, this is my desire. My desire Come on, open up your heart right now. To honor, to you. honor you. Wherever you are right now, just lift up your hand up to the Lord. Lord, read all my heart. I worship. Lift up your voice up to the Lord together with me, Lord Jesus.
Jesus, Jesus. Just like what you heard today on the ends. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the end have no time to complain. The end has no time to murmur. The end has no time to even see mystics. They just continue doing what they're called to do. To build their colony. To build their nest. The end does not look even at himself. The end always look at others. But the Bible says, love God with all your heart, with all your soul. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Today when I share to you, you must celebrate your life. There are many of you here today, you are not able to celebrate your life because someone has spoken word against your life. You need to learn to celebrate your life. Celebrate who you are. Listen, Sister Grace, I'm talking to you. Celebrate who you are. Don't celebrate someone else and complain about something else. Celebrate who you are. That God is still keeping you alive. Praise God for that. Celebrate what you have. Celebrate what God has given to you today. Your family, your husband, your wife, your children. Appreciate what you have. The ends does that. That's so they can live their life. The ants are so powerful. If they ever know how powerful they are, they can even wipe out human race. My beloved ones, maybe you feel like an ant. You could feel like an insect yourself. But if you can allow yourself to walk according to the will and purpose of God, he can make you stronger. Amen. Learn to appreciate who you are. Father, Lord, I lift up my brothers, my sisters in this house today. May they learn to appreciate who you are in them. As you sing this song once again, come on, I want you to turn it into prayer. Turn it into prayer. I, 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 I request no altar call today because I want to fellowship with some of you all. I never had a chance to greet y'all and talk to y'all. Many times I take time to pray for y'all. I just want to go and hug some of you, talk to y'all, shake hands. So we're going to worship God with this song. I'm going to pass the thing to Dr. Kwan. But I want to talk to y'all. I want to just say hello to y'all. And hear your heartbeat. Amen. Let's worship God with this song once again. You and Jesus. Amen. You and Jesus. Go ahead. Lord, I give you my heart.
the church is a community. So, uh, uh, pastors, you may want to speak to us personally, others, you speak to you. How you can evolve in this family? You really ask me, we are the body of Christ. We just discussed last Thursday's devotion or uh, uh, revival meeting. Everyone has a role. You Minimum you have is one gift. You need to use it for others. God give up gifts not for ourselves. You say, I'm old, how to give? You still have to give. Don't bring your gift to the grave. Grave is full of gifts that not using. The richest place is the grave. Not tap, untap gifts, brothers and sisters. Talk to our counsellor, Pastor Gumi Singh, he will tell you how you can serve, how you can be part of the body of Christ. That is the one. Brothers and sisters, God give us a structure, body of Christ, family of but you are not part of it. You just come an ad hoc, no ad hoc body of Christ, no ad hoc family. When you, your physical, and I know we have very blessed, we have two families. One is physical family, and spiritual family. Both are equally important. You ask me, how can you, you know, this is king of kings family, you <laughs> make it less important? King of kings, the highest order. Nobody can above this king. But yet, we make him something that is less important. Brothers and sisters, don't do that. You know, Jesus is coming very soon. You know what is uh, during rapture? Only those children of God, only those who have relation with the Father can go up. Rapture come. Don't think about 66. I believe pre trip. Because so many verses in the Bible pre trip. You know, John's chapter 14, verse 1 to 3, pre trip. Francis, you must know this. Only children of God can go up. We are protected. I, 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 you know, God leave us here to suffer. I don't think He is such a father who want us to suffer. Said He's not the kind of father. He is a loving father, merciful father. He'll take us away when, at the right time. Be part of the family of God. Build His kingdom. What other things? The other things is not so important whether you like this person, whether you, you know, get along with this. This, boy, this message, the A's message, tell us very, no leaders, no leaders, and they work together. They build the community together. You know, hallelujah. You know, if you are a duplication, I think this is Jesus of our creator. Nobody is duplicated. Nobody is, everyone is unique and authentic and everyone has a role to play in this family. Jesus is coming back very soon. I, I tell you, it's imminent. I don't know how long, but only God knows. But we must be ready. God said, not, uh, uh, what I call, is be ready. Don't predict when He is coming. Be ready that it ends. He gives us this wisdom, work like ends. That this church, this, you know, strong church, strong community, Strong life, strong family, strong church, strong community. Amen. Praise you. May God bless you. May God keep you. May He make His face shine upon you and give you grace. And may He lift up and give you shalom. Amen. Pastor. Before we go, let's put a slide, my last slide. In fact, I just supposed to show you this last slide. I should say this last slide. The last slide. My last slide. Yeah. Let's look at that. This was my last one. And he just mentioned it. He said what? Romans chapter 13 verse 11 to 14 says what? And do this. Let's all read together. Come on. And do this understanding the present time. The hours already come for you to wake up from your slumber. Because our salvation near now than when we first believe. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in cursing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourself with Lord Jesus Christ and do things about how to gratify the desire of the flesh. What is the desire of the flesh? Is a Greek word called sarak. Simply means sinful state of human being uh, often presented as a power in opposition to the spirit. Alright, that's what he means by that. 
And I just want to read this. I suppose to read that, but Dr. Kwan has just mentioned that. So I think we are in line what God wants to do in this church. Amen. What God wants to do in church. We are in line. This is going to be a prophetic, powerful, anointed ministry. Let's all run together and let's be what God wants us to be. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.